maybe some of my viewers already know Spoonie from the Spoonie experiment. If you don't, he reviews a lot of various pop culture things from the last 30 or so years, so if that sounds at all appealing, please go check him out right now. I will put a link in the sex bar. Now, a while ago, I don't know, a month, two months, he did a vlog video review of the American remake of a Swedish film called Let the Right One In. That would be the Swedish film. The English title of the Swedish film. Anyway, I do want to make absolutely clear that this video is not at all against Spoonie. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Spoonie and all of his work. I love most of his work. Follow him, you might say religiously. This is about something he said about this remake. Now, I trust Spoonie's integrity. He seems like what I think is a very good thing and what I would like to be considered as a critic who tells it like it is, who doesn't sugarcoat anything and who tells you when something is good and tells you when something is bad. I don't doubt that his perception of the American remake is an accurate perception of what that movie was trying to convey. My issue is with the American remake. Now, I haven't seen it, so let's say I'm citing Spoonie as the source here, and if this is incorrect, please tell me so. I would hate to be spreading misinformation. The Swedish film is about, you could say, two strange existences, two children who don't completely fit in, and they find each other and become friends. You might even call it that they fall in love, and it's a beautiful thing. Two people who thought that they were basically going to be alone, finding each other, and having that other person, and it's not that they change to be like everybody else, no, they just find each other and remain the same and it just works. It's a beautiful film. And in general I would just recommend the film. It's got really well-written children's dialogue, you know. They sound like children when they talk and it isn't annoying either. I tend to be quite annoyed with children in movies. But in this case, they just work, and they're mi mighty good actors as well. However, as you may or may not have heard, one of these two children is a vampire. And that's basically... it's not a horror film. It, it really is not. It's partially wilf wish fulfillment because it's based on the writer of the novel's own childhood. He apparently was bullied as a child and, you know, when that happens you might think if I just had a really powerful friend and yeah, but the vampire is not an evil creature and it's not really about the people who are afraid of the vampire. It's about the vampire's relationship with this boy. And in the American remake, they apparently... I Maybe I should start with the title. They changed it from Let the Right One In to Let Me In. I think that right there says a lot. Let the Right One In is like, think about who you let into your life and, you know, not everyone, you know, some might be bad for you, but I would say from the movie, 
the vampire is very good for him, but let me in, that's almost like a threat, you know, that's something you hear your dangerous ex scream as they pound the door to your apartment, you know, that's not, there's really no layers to that title. And apparently what they did was change the vampire into this evil creature that would coldly calculate, I believe those were Spoonie's words, cold and calculating. And the idea was that this vampire was just taking advantage of this boy. And again, I don't doubt that Spoonie is correct that that was what the American remake was trying to tell us. And I think that that is just a criminal misunderstanding of the real movie. I'm not even gonna say, you know, the original... No, the real movie. Because this... It's fine to remake something. I say judge it all on its own premise. Or whatever that word is. You know, every creative enterprise has, or might have, value of its own. You know, it doesn't have to be the exact same, but this is just criminal. You know what? You want to make a movie that's about evil vampires? Go ahead. There are millions, okay, thousands, hundreds, whatever. I don't watch that many vampire movies. There are a lot. If you are going to remake something that is specifically about just because you're weird doesn't mean you're evil, then don't change it to if you're weird, you're evil, okay? That's just not right. You should not do that. And if this was just a movie, I mean, I love movies, but if this was just a movie, that would be, you know, that would be it. Just a movie, not real life, fine. But my problem here, the core, what I really consider to be the issue here is that this is representative of how a lot of people think. A lot of people, maybe especially capitalist, believe that there are just people, you know, not creatures because creatures don't exist unless you're talking animals and that's a completely different story that there are people who are just plain evil, and that is a very dangerous way to think. The people who you think are evil, I've already done a video on this, but it gets to be that you just think of everything they do as evil, and if they're doing the same thing as you are, they're doing it wrong. It's a very, very dangerous way to think. It leads to persecution, apartheid, and even worse. I mean, do I even have to bring up the Holocaust? That is all about people believing that another people is evil. And if I may, I would like to share my idea of why many capitalists believe that there are people who are evil. Capitalism at its core, if, if you don't change it to be more lenient or if you don't regulate capitalism, capitalism requires everybody to look out for themselves. And that's, you know, you can argue if that's the way it should be or not. That's not what this video is about. What I'm saying is, when you and the people you know all calculate in order to just stay alive, you maybe have to tell yourself that you're the good guy, you know? That the way you're calculating is fine. You're not being cold, you're not being callous about it, you're the good guy, but 
it is a potentially evil trait. So, maybe there are evil calculating people. And that is my main problem with this movie. And it's not just this movie, it's just a very good example, a good lead-in to this. They took a beautiful story and turned it into there are evil people out there. You know what? Not everybody should be trusted. And once again, I'm not saying that we should allow everything. But we can understand things. And just fighting things, trying to destroy them without understanding them, is not the way to go. If we understand them, we can dig it out at the root, you know? We can take care of what causes these things, rather than just treating the symptoms, because that never works on a... in the long run, you know? And this movie is not the only case. You see it in American television. NCIS often has these lines of dialogue, these little hints that you should really think that if someone is accused, they're a criminal. And lawyers, you know, calling your lawyer, that means you're probably guilty. Because, you know, no one has ever been accused and later convicted of a crime just because they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Just because they had history, prior history. Just because they were unfortunate. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. I'm going to end this right here. And if anybody thinks that this is at all an attack on Spoonie, you know what, Spoonie, I respect your opinion. I have no desire to change, I, I don't need to change your mind. You're a cool guy. I love your work. This is not about you. This is about the movie. I completely trust your interpretation of the movie. And... If anybody's watching this and can't, you know, can't separate the two, can't separate Spoonie's video and his opinion from what I'm trying to convey in this video, then that's really your problem, so I'm not even going to deal with that. That was it for this one. Goodbye.